Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of A Brief History Of, and today we'll be looking at the Dreadnought Hoax. You'd think that the flagship of the British Royal Navy would be pretty much impossible to black your way onto. Well apparently donning blackface and pretending to be a delegation of Abyssinian royals is the way to do it, albeit very offensive. Now unsurprisingly, the Dreadnought hoax took place on, well, HMS Dreadnought, on the 7th of February 1910, and was the brainchild of William Horace de Vere Cole, an Irish born poet and professional prankster. But first, here's a little bit of information on HMS Dreadnought. HMS Dreadnought was a battleship serving in the Royal Navy between 1906 and 1919 and was in her day the most powerful warship in the world and pretty much made a whole class of battleships obsolescent overnight. With a length of 527 feet and a complement of 810 personnel, HMS Dreadnought was the diamond of the Royal Navy. In 1910, Dreadnought was under the captainship of Herbert Richmond. Now the hoax on HMS Dreadnought was actually a rehash of a previous cold prank five years before. Carl and his uni friend, Adrian Stephen, had become notorious for a number of minor pranks while studying at Cambridge. The pair planned to create their magnum opus of hoaxes by impersonating the Sultan of Zanzibar playing a state visit to Cambridge. Luckily for the duo, the Sultan was actually on a state visit to the UK at the time and had been highly publicised in the newspapers. The Mayor of Cambridge received what looked like an official telegram stating that the Sultan would be playing an impromptu visit to the city. A delegation of five people dressed up in robes and turbans, including Cole and Stephen, turned up at Cambridge Station. The five pranksters were met by the town clerk and were ushered to the Cambridge Guild Hall for an audience with the mayor. The hoax went so far as to even have a photo taken for posterity. This must have been a facepalm moment for the mayor after he found out that he had been duped. This brings us to 1910, and Cole standing on the most advanced warship in the world, the hoax gang consisted of Bloomsbury Group regulars, Virginia Woolf, the famous writer, her brother and Cambridge prankster Adrian Stephen, barrister Guy Ridley, author Anthony Buxton and artist Duncan Grant. The idea for the hoax came from an officer of the HMS Hawk, who wanted to play a prank on Commander Willie Fisher, who was Adrian and Virginia's cousin. And yes, that Hawk, the one that accidentally rammed RMS Olympic. Virginia would later mention on the subject of the hoax, in those days, the young officers had a gay time. They were always up to some lark, and one of their chief occupants, it seemed to be, was to play jokes on each other. There were a great many rivalries and intrigues in the Navy. The officers liked scoring off of each other, and the officers of the Hawk and Dreadnought had a feud. And Cole's friend, who was on the Hawk, had come to Cole to say to him, You're a great hand at hoaxing people. Couldn't you do something to pull the leg of the Dreadnought? The hoax would copy many parts of the Cambridge escapade, including dressing up in turbans, robes and fake beards, as well as darkening their skin, which I must say is, is quite wrong. This time round, however, the crew wouldn't impersonate the Sultan of Zanzibar, but present themselves as the Emperor of Abyssinia and his entourage. Carl would pretend to be working for the Foreign Office, Stephen as the Interpreter, Buxton as the Emperor, and the rest as his Royal Posse. Much like the Cambridge hoax, the setup involved an official looking telegram being sent to the ship announcing the arrival of the Emperor. When the pranksters reached Weymouth Station, they found a full honour guard awaiting them. Needless to say, the telegram had done its job. What is bizarre was that because of the naval officers didn't want to offend, the delegation received no security checks. As if they had searched them, they might have realised that one of the group was a woman wearing a beard. It bubbles the mind as several officers of HMS Dreadnought knew the pranksters personally and Commander Fisher was even related to two of them. Just look at the picture of the pranksters with Virginia on the left, it really shows how gullible the officers must have been. As they toured the ship the group spoke amongst themselves in a gibberish made up of Latin, Swahili and Greek. Apparently they use the phrase bunga bunga regularly during the visit, politically correct this is not. They toured the decks of the Dreadnought for most of the day, eventually leaving the ship to return to London, which must have been a relief as Duncan's moustache was beginning to fall off. Carl contacted the Daily Mirror to print the photo of the hoax, and the Navy was ridiculed. At some point, the Navy sought to convict Carl, however impersonating African emperors to gain access to warships was not on the statute books. Funny that. The publicity of the hoax gained the notoriety of the Bloomsbury Group, what is strange about the Bloomsbury Group is at the time they were very liberal and the hoax was aimed at poking the eye of militarism. 
However, the method used could be considered offensive by today's standards. Funnily enough, during the First World War, when HMS Dreadnought managed to ram a submarine, it received telegrams from other ships saying Bunga Bunga. I do think the hoax highlights the naivety of the 20th century and it shows that us Brits can be starstruck when meeting royalty, even if it turns out to be people with fake beards and drag. Now, do you think of any great hoaxes? Let me know in the comments below. And all that's left to say is thank you for watching. Did you enjoy the video? I hope you did. If that's the case, leave a like and a comment below. New episodes are released every Thursday and the best way to see them is via subscription. You can help the channel grow by sharing videos with your friends and there's also a Patreon link down below if you fancy financially supporting the channel. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.